Alrighty, what is going on you guys? It's your boy White Album here and welcome back to some Witch on the Holy Night. You're probably wondering, didn't you beat this game? Yes, I did. And if you haven't seen that, I recommend watching the playthrough. It's on my channel. Go look it up. <laughs> but I'm back on this game because, you know, I it's kind of weird how I got into this thought process. But um, I had recently just platinum the game Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. So I was looking at that trophy and, uh, you know, like scrolling through the trophies, I saw Witch on the Holy Night, and I was just thinking, you know, maybe I should get back to this game because, you know, all it is is just reading. And in order to get the platinum, I just need to read the extra, the, uh, the extra archive stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. And why not bring you guys along with me on this adventure to get this game platinum and just enjoy some time. So let's do it, man. Let's go to the archives from what I looked up. We need to do the seven days of spinning or seven yeah seven days of spinning volumes one two three and four uh the wonderful water ploys apparently there's actually five and six but in order to uh get five and six i need to read these first uh seven days of spinning and this one here which is the honey adventure which gives me the trophy i think it's called like glazed ham or some shit like that and the other one is called the town story that way i can unlock uh, the final two for, I believe it's wonderful water ploys. And then there's also another one that I haven't unlocked is called anyone can sleep, uh, but not laugh. And that's like a whole other thing too. So we're going to get into that one, but I believe I have to play these two for seven days and then honeyed adventure unlock that one. And then I'll probably finish it off with wonderful water ploys. Cause it does, you know, go through one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that's just going to give me a whole bunch of trophies to give me this uh, platinum trophy for this game. Uh, the one that I am going to be skipping over is the Carnegie case because we already did that one. If you, uh, That's actually one of my extra videos that I have through my playthrough. Uh, you'll see it. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Sit back, relax. Let's get back onto this game because I love this game, man. And I'm also hyped for... You know, let me let me give let me put my hype up a little bit more for when Tsukihime, uh, the English translation drops or uh relatively soon i think in june it drops i did pre-order that one so be prepared for that playthrough when it happens so let's get on to it man let's get into it again i love this game so why not continue it why not continue it and you guys seem to love it too because it's like my most popular thing on my channel so far so <laughs> all right let's go let's go and you already know the deal let's drink some water all right it's been a while since i've last actually um <clears throat> read and the last time i did this i had no face cam so you guys are going to be seeing my lovely face reading this to you so again sit back relax some snacky snacks if you have them something to drink you know or just have this as background noise who cares you know but as long as you guys are enjoying it and watching it let's get on to it so here we go Ooh, let me mentally prepare myself here because again i have not read in a while and it's been a while since i last played this so here we go <clears throat> Morning in the city moved incredibly fast and made one wonder if it was even a morning at all with people so bright eyed and bushy tailed. Oh, was it the boy soldier roll? The unfamiliar roar that awoke him reminded him of a rock slide. The identity of the monstrous sound was the engine of a motorcycle. Mr. Yoshida, his neighbor, was leaving for work. It was hard to determine when night ended and morning began here. The town's urbanization was synonymous with insomnia. Also, uh, real quick before I get back into reading, I'm actually going to keep the music on this time because, dude, music makes this game and I kind of regret not having music throughout my playthrough. I think the, the I think I put music on like the, like, at the last three videos like three or four videos of the playthrough and it like really like made the game dude so i'm kind of i'm kind of annoyed that you know youtube was like hey you can't have that type of music because you're going to get copyright claimed so but i'm definitely going to keep music on for this uh, playthrough and then obviously when Tsukihime remake drops i'm going to be keeping music in that one too so forget whatever youtube says i don't care <laughs> but here we go <clears throat> Already? It's barely sun up yet. Where could Mr. Yoshida be going so early? He sluggishly lifted himself off the floor. 
He caught himself starting to survey his surroundings out of a ha out of habit before deciding better of it and made his way to the washroom. There, he poured himself a cup of water and slowly gulped it down. Who the fuck drinks water from their bathroom tap? That's kind of crazy. I had been relegated to well water until recently. He found the convenience pleasing. Pleased was definitely the word that had best described how he felt. Civilization is about erasing inconveniences through optimization, the reduction of labor in our daily lives. Mr. Koga had taught him that while the essentials were easier than ever to get our hands on, life itself was growing more and more complex. So too it was his duty to adjust to his new reality. As a distant relative of Sojuro's father, Mr. Koga had taken Sojuro in, even though the boy had been little more than a stranger in his life till that point. I like how it's like distant relatives like it means something like, okay. <laughs> like I have family members I've never met, but it's like, okay. <laughs> Mr. Koga had helped him get registered at school and find an apartment to lease. Yeah, you could tell this is the 80s because it's a high school student and he lives in an apartment. Try finding that shit now in 2020 fucking four, especially in Florida. Ugh, it's terrible, dude. It's terrible. <laughs> Though he had insisted that Sojuro handle his residence card and register his change of address by himself. This series of uh, procedures proved ex uh, exceedingly difficult for Sojuro, but knowing that this was a part of his new city life, he did not. Or he did his best to complete them diligently. While they may have been, oh what? While they may have a reputation for being a stickler for the rules, city offices aren't all that bad. It was the first thing Sojuro learned after beginning his life in the city. Two weeks had ela elapsed. Why the fuck would you word it like that? What the fuck? You could have just said two weeks have passed, but you know, they want to be they want to be cool here. They still they're still testing my vocabulary. <laughs> two weeks had elapsed since he left the countryside. And, un, uh, and un, as uneasy as living alone made him feel, he could feel, uh, he felt like he could make it work. It was not as if the people here spoke another language, and Mr. Koga was absolutely right about how practical the rules of the city were. Sojuro continued down the hard but surprisingly walkable path. Before work, he jogged in, uh, in the park to pass the time. Even exercise like this offered lessons for Sojuro to learn. Each passing person was a new face to look at. The old man who greeted him, the young worker with his eyes to the ground, and the girl on the bench surrounded by birds. They were all familiar uh, they were all unfamiliar sights to Sojuro. Unaccustomed to the city, he labored to understand its rules. Whether they were complex or simple, are completely meaningless compared to mountain life which only dealt with nature city life uh, left one with what with way too many options you could argue that such an environment was toxic for sojro it's toxic for people who live in the city to begin with <laughs> what the hell his life was a string of unsettling moments but amongst it all there were rules that he sincerely admired for one that the city revolved around various forms of profit and loss. The fact that only that one only needed money to get bare essentials to survive. The city was a comforting thought to Sojuro. Not anymore. <laughs> God, this game is so pretty. Yeah, so oh, we got the boy. We got the boy Kenomi. Hey, not everything's that simple. Money is just a simple, but simple. <laughs> a symbol. It's the other stuff that truly matters. Money ain't that different from those free shoulder massage coupons people hand out. Free shoulder massage coupon, there you go. And it's not like the food you buy with a 10,000 yen bill uh, won't turn out bogus. 
Look, money can't buy you happiness. Like, you know. Eh. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe? Are you for real? Man, I can't believe you right now. One day, you're happy to break your back working a full day for a measly 4,000 yen. The next, you're elbow deep in dirty dishes saying, it's all about the money. What's your major malfunction? No, I think that the current system is kind of amazing. To be honest, I never realized how limited bartering can be. Anyway, Konomi, you're gonna drop that if you're not careful. Oh, oh crap. Oh damn. Whew. That was close. If I break any more, it'll be my head next time. Oh, thanks for the save. So, what do you want to talk to me about? It's money, isn't it? That's Exactly. I've learned my lesson the hard way, but now I know that it's better to have more money than less. That's why I like to work even more than I am now. <laughs> Are you for real? You already wash dishes like a machine. Uh, old translation error. It says, didn't I just how money can't buy happiness? <laughs> it was like, didn't I just say how money can't buy happiness? Love can, but back right up. Why is the, why is the water so cold? Hmm. Say, we should probably get paid more for washing dishes in the winter, huh? It's cold, all right, but nothing I can't handle. My water is so cold it hurts. <laughs> Yo, I didn't mean it as ice water, you doofus. That hard head of yours can be real annoying, you know that? <laughs> for someone who couldn't even work a cash, a cash register four days ago, I can't speak. You sure got comfortable for working for the man. <laughs> I guess money really is everything. The power of capitalism ain't nothing to mess with. <laughs> Bet your pie holes part timers. The door's right there if you want to quit. <laughs> I don't have the cash to waste on deadbeats. Apparently, you did since you hired two high school students, my man, so. Joke's on you. The complaint and chopsticks flew at them like a storm. This mess of a Chinese restaurant manager was a stubborn man who was willing to let miners work for him and didn't shy from violence, even if it was directed at the son of a lifelong friend. Sojiro felt that this is what Sparta must have been like. Look, he's angry. We need to work harder. <laughs> <laughs> wow, can your nose get any browner yet? Me? I'm trying to make the most of my teens. Whatever. Right. Been meaning to ask. Are you the type that likes to go out on a late night strolls or more of a bicycle kind of guy? Not that it really matters, but... Look, the last time he went on a on a late night stroll, he ended up being fucking 
uh, hog tied by two witches, so. Baito no kairi wa hotondo yoru ni naru kedo. So you hanashi ja nai in da yo na. Yoru no sampo mo tode mo shumi ja nai kedo. Sore ga? Hmm? It's always late when I go home after the restaurant. But that's not what you're asking, is it? I'm not really into walking when it's late out. Why do you ask? Yeah, no reason. Like, you just moved here. Mm, kind of weird question. But don't you think the town is dangerous? Not like people are bad or nothing. But I mean, you know what, uh, you know that we get 10 attacks like out of a slasher fig every year, right? And they, and since, what? And since they started theirs. Hmm? What's a slasher? <laughs> you don't know? It's like when a thief snatches someone's purse. No, a bad example. It's more like someone's killing to see if they can get away with it. A bunch of dead people in the woods near the suburbs. Real gnarly. That's why you shouldn't go out too late. The park in Misaki Hills is a hot spot for the weird stuff. Having you heard about having you heard about how they think there's a freak doing uh, doing it doing it as some chick with a sliced mouth? That's the um something Ona. It's like it's it literally literally translates to slip mouth woman. It's a little tall ass lady wears a mask. If you don't know, it's like uh again I just almost explained a tall lady wears a mask has fucking big ass scissors she walks around and she goes around saying hey am i pretty and people are like yeah sure and then she takes it off and she shows her fucking joker smile she's like am i pretty now and i believe it's like uh supposedly it's like if you say yes she's like you liar and then she kills you but if you say no i think she tries to persuade you but i think the supposedly the way you know this is how they say in japanese folklore the way you get to like the way you like uh get away from her is to like misdirect her with another question and she's like huh so she sits there pondering while you fucking you know speed walk past her <laughs> it's pretty cool because uh i'm gonna go to side tangent here because she actually she actually shows up as an enemy in the game uh ghostwire tokyo and that uh that's a, another really good game um but she like shows up there's like two variants of her of that like slip mouth woman or women, because it's a mo it's a, like a bunch of characters, and she's uh there's like a version of her that you fight, and she's like a boss, and uh bro she fucked me up in that game, I ain't gonna lie, <laughs> but yeah that's basically that's a that's basically the folklore that uh Kinomi is going off here. Nope. This is the first I've heard of a sliced mouth woman. <laughs> background. <laughs> like I said, slasher film shit. They say her mouth extends all the way to her ears. It's pretty old school, kind of urban legend these days. How did it go again? There's a woman in a coat who asks, Am I beautiful? in the dead of night. Uh, exactly what I just explained. Supposedly, let me go on another tangent. Her husband cheated on her. She found them, and she was like, oh, "I think that's how that went." Or her husband cut her. It's some shit like that. I don't fucking know. But uh, it's like, yeah, no, I think her husband cut her face because she cheated on him, or it's like vice versa. I don't remember. <laughs> Even if you say she is, she'll follow you home and kill you. Intense chicks like that are a no-no. 
That's like something you'd see in an American comic book. Well, funny enough, it originated in your country, pal. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have here like fucking Sasquatch and show that. I mean, then again, we did have like Charles Manson, and that's a pretty gnarly fucking story. That sounds really scary. Does she actually follow you home? <laughs> the fuck happened now? They say she crawls in through a window. She squeezes her way in like a cockroach. <laughs> I told you not to utter that word in this kitchen. I'm gonna kill you, you little turd. The bag of Kinomi's head exploded in pain with the impact of the boss's frying pan. Sojo was reminded of just how dangerous this town could be. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, right. I'd like to see you try. <laughs> what kind of boss says that anyways? This is a restaurant, ain't it? Well, maybe calling it that is too much. Kinomi. Dude, is your head okay, Konami? Huh? Oh, that's nothing. People tell me I'm real tough, especially my head. Anyway, avoid the dark, okay? You look like a sitting duck. Thanks. By the way, is 10 victims per year a lot? Don't know. It probably isn't a lot, but it totally ain't a few either. まあ、うちの通り魔事件が他に比べて厄介なのはまだ犯人が見つかってないってことだからね。the real scary shit is that they're still out there, somewhere, since they haven't been caught. He laughed cheerfully. <laughs> Kenobi was probably trying to take the edge off his off of his story, but the noble intent of his laugh was completely lost on Sojuro. His friendly warning was equally futile. Sojuro was simply impressed that Kenobi was able to laugh it off. That is fucking. That, that is funny though. Being like. Yo, be careful out there. You could get fucking murdered. And it's like, why would you tell me that? Why would you tell, like, why? <laughs> well, what joy does this bring us both, you know? <laughs> oh, <here. clears throat> On the way home, uh, nobody ahead or behind. Sojo proceeded through the dimly lit street when suddenly... He turned to face an improbable sound. <laughs> Something stabbed him in the head and fell to the floor. He frowned. A small bird had apparently flown into the telephone the, the telephone the telephone pole before landing on his head. The starling cleaned itself off and flew away. The falling of the bird and his desperate escape thereafter was long anything he had experienced in his life up until now. Most of the townsfolk would have seen the incident as unlucky, ominous, or even sinister, but Sojiro just nodded and went about his business. You understand. What might have been a first for him was surely an everyday occurrence <clears throat> for these city folk. Ah, there we go. There we go, there we go. Only 20, damn, only 30 minutes in? Well, let's go on to the next one. Let's go on to the next one, shall we? All right, here we go. Seven Days of Spinning, Volume 2. All right, looks like we're the Kowonji Estate. Might be seeing the homegirl Alice and or... Alko. I'm home, Alice. You here yet? I got some stuff from the arcade while on the way home from church. There is a uh, there is a rice crackers. You want to share some? Her voice reverberated through the foyer, dyed in the colors of the setting sun. 
It was after five in the afternoon when Aoko, or Aoko, there you go, stood in her school uniform, cheerfully returned home. She had finished her uh, student council duties and attended her monthly meeting with the church. Welcome back. I see that the meeting went as planned. The voice was coming from the second floor. In contrast with Aoko and her boundless energy, a considerably calmer girl descended from above. There were some complaints, but all, but all in all, it went well. Our problems are. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Because apparently that game likes to do that to me. <laughs> Our problems are ours alone. So I decided to not get them involved. You okay with that, Alice? Ah, best girl. Yes. I'd ask for their help in a pinch, but they can't be trusted. We'll call on them to clean up the mess, as usual. Agreed. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, that's a little, what's it called? A little froggy here. Hopefully I'm not getting sick. That would suck. All right, here we go. Agreed. No one likes to have to keep looking over their shoulder. We can't fully commit to this if we're worried about what's going on elsewhere. Right, I'm assuming they're talking about the association. <laughs> well, I can, but... But you don't have time for that, do you, Alko? <laughs> Harumph. Tap, tap. With the graceful sounds of her footsteps, Alice entered the foyer. As she did... Alko's eyes were directly, or what directly, were directed toward the skylight above. Mm, the glass is kind of dirty. I wanted to discuss that after today's business is concluded. That is. Alko, are you feeling okay, Alko? You can rest if you're not. え?何を気味悪いな。気遣いされることなんてないってば。いつも通りの1日だったし、そんな疲れた顔してる私。ん? Well, don't be such a nag. I'm not stressed or anything. Today was pretty normal. Do I look that tired? Okay, uh, from a story perspective, I'm assuming this is from after she had met with uh, Sojiro for the first time. As school activities went, today's were a breeze. There it is. At a glance, her school life might seem a little bit almost idyllic. Though the more she thought about it, some headache-inducing incidents may have stood out here and there. And with some sincere introspection, Alko uh, might have recognized the signs of her own mental fatigue, but doing so would rather further added uh, would have further added to her stress. Okay, enough about that. I didn't come home to just stress over school. What are we learning about today? Mesmerized basics, right? Wish? So let's get started. I feel like I could, uh, I could master anything today. Alko focused on shredding her anger and stress. Shredding, not shredding. <laughs> and headed upstairs with gusto. Are you coming? I thought we were going to do it in your room, Alice. <laughs> the problem me dressed Alice, nodded, in slight dissat uh, dissatisfaction. So I'll forever love the face she does. 
are we going to eat those Isaiah rice crackers today? Or she looked at the freshly baked treats Alco was holding. In the end, the lesson took place after Alice had her cup of tea. For an apprentice like Alko, Alice Kowondri was the kind of roommate and teacher that was hard to come by, considering they're both of the same age. If she insisted that Alko rest to preserve her health, Alko had no choice but to comply. The lesson was over, was over after two hours, so the two finished the dinner they had prepared and decided on a change of venue for where they would spend the rest of uh, the last hours of the day. The sunroom was next to the drawing room and the east wing of the residence and offered a view of the beautiful grounds. The proud Kawonji Estate's luxurious sunroom featured furnishings on par with those in the splendid drawing room. Meanwhile, ah oh fuck, this is the yeah, song that got me fucking copyright claimed. It's going to be a jungle come next year's summer. The grounds outside have fallen into disrepair, neglected by the owner. Don't you have any landscaping ploys lying around here, Alice? Alko took a step into the sunroom and poured some tea. I'm sure I could find one, but it'll take some effort. Playing along with her roommate's joke, Alice made to sit in her chair. The fucking Dragon Ball bonbons. Just as she caught sight of the box of chocolates on the table, her lovely eyes narrowed in a frown. Hey, don't be like that. Today's screw up was half your fault, you know. <laughs> maybe the rice crackers threw us off our game. Or maybe it was me being too aggressive that turned that wish into a gander. But still. Hmm. We're down six pieces. Eh? We are? Wait. That's what you're upset about? Alko's eyes stared intently at the box of chocolates. You can search the world and never find a finer selection of chocolates. The brand was Sixpence Songs, apparently. De, never heard of it. So what was it about the mirror you wanted to talk about? It's still in Misaki mode, right? Not mansion mode? Yeah. Yes, the mansion can take care of itself for the time being, so I changed its target to Masaki City. Things have been cloudy there since yesterday. Now I know for certain that with each passing day, the forces arrayed against us grow. You mean there's more of those things? There's the ones who are captured, and I've witnessed two other suspicious types. One in the city, and one in the woods outside of town. Ugh. Oh, did too much to ask that you could be wrong just this once? Alright, which one of which one is causing the biggest ruckus? The one in the woods. I'm not getting I'm getting close to capturing it, but it knows it's being watched. It's not taking the bait. Hmm, I see. You want to go after it tonight? To go after it tonight, one simple suggestion that would change the course of her life forever. Ah. 
Okay, so this is before they go to the park and fucking Sojo's like, hey, look at that. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, kill him. He cannot see our secrets. It was no overstatement to say that this was a roll of the dice that would decide whether she had made the moxie to survive the experience of jumping out of a plane with a torn parachute. Akko swallowed her hesitation and fear with a little tea. On the school's anniversary night, she declared that she had made up her mind, and from that and from that time on, she would not waver. Alice welcomed her roommate's strength with the barest hint of regret. As someone who shared the same motivations as her, Alice was ultimately reassured by Alko's resolve. Well, perhaps more pleased than re uh, reassured. All in all, it had taken the better part of a year, but finally, Alko had stepped out of Alice's shadow. The two partners now shared the same fate. Alko was not the partner Alice had, uh, had asked for, but a partner nonetheless. Strangers rolled a, a world apart. And even if eventually they would battle each other to the death using all they, they had inherited, it was only right they did it on equal terms. It was, at least for now, a cause for celebration over how far Alko had come. Generous, but I'll be fine on my own tonight. The time would be better spent practicing memorize, uh, mesmerize a little more. The park is under your jurisdiction, so I'll put you to work when the time comes. Alice did not so much as look at uh, Alko as she explained her reasons. The skelly enemy she would face that night. Her plans for Alko. For in only two days from now, Alko Alzaki would be reborn. Hi, hi, Wakarimashita. Fine, whatever you say. Alko finished her tea and stood up from her seat. I guess I'm practicing then. Wait, hold on. Memor Mesmerize was the same spell she used on Sojourn at the park, right? Like at the end battle with, uh... With, uh... The fucking... The moon? That's uh, all I can... The, the moon? I forgot what the name was. But uh, here we go. <clears throat> um, how did that first part go again? Be light and frail, nimble and fast. Tick tock, tick tock. There's no time to waste. That's right. <sighs> that right. So Ugh, no. You're missing the quiet part. Remember. The weight of the air, the tremble of one's breast, light lags behind while shadow pulls ahead. Be careful, or you may find yourself in a state of unease. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. Now, if you'll excuse me. Alko grabbed a piece of chocolate and popped it into her mouth. He's like, that was my fucking chocolate. <laughs> She waved before leaving Alice alone in silence. Alice stiffened a moment before slamming the box of chocolate shut, as if it could serve to, sol to scold Alco for snacking. <laughs> Ooh. Alright. Alright, we'll finish that one pretty easily. So, you know what? Why not just go through this entire thing? Instead of just making it uh, once I'll just do it all in one part. So here we go. Seven days of spinning, volume three. Let's get it, shall we? I'm surprised how fast. Because like when I did the Carnegie case, it took like I think almost two videos to do. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm actually kind of uh glad that these are going by pretty quick. Because I planned just to I was only gonna do just to do the first two volumes, but it went by Pretty fast, so. What the fuck? So might as well just go through all of these, right? 
We got the time. Ah, shit. What did I just press? Oh, okay. I just went backwards. Oh, okay. So here we go. The beautiful moon. Dark clouds in the sky. The dark visage of the woods. A fog grows thin. Oh. Good morning. Time check. Uh, zero o'clock. <laughs> Ooh, big old red eye. Twenty-four hours since last update. Running. Oh. Running backup. Transmitting log. Commencing local scan. Atmospheric analysis. Nitrogen. Nominal. Is that how you say that? Is that how you say that? Nominal? <laughs> Oxygen. Nominal. Or nominal. Yeah, nominal. Nominal. Argon. Nominal. Carbon dioxide. Nominal. Theoretical fifth element. Multiple anomalies, anomalies detected. Local space time discrepancy detected. Conclusion. Contact. Class 1 threat. Shifting perception range from subjective to objective. Shifting autonomous circuit to reserve power. Shifting diagnostic circuit to main power. Shifting view mode, IR filter inactive. I filter active. Now it begins. Initiating combat. Like, where are we? Is this a fucking robot? Oh, master, preserve me from harm. Oh, yeah, kinky little robot. <laughs> what if that was just that part volume? I would have been a little annoyed. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> Clear my throat real quick. Masaki City was a thickly wooded area. Urban development continued unabated, but Mother Nature still drew breath in its outskirts. Wise old trees had been turned to lumber. The leaves had begun to turn to mulch. Even though the birds who curiously tilted their heads and moved on, the verdure, the verdure, the verd, yeah, lived on, a testament to its enduring strength. Until the time came that the devouring light of civilization became powerful enough to en encroach upon nature's mysterious domain. These woods were no exception. The outlying border between Misaki City and Misaki Hills had been left untouched. Though driven from their nests and dens here, wildlife continued to subsist even today. No longer able to return to the days before man, this was just like any other forest situated next to a town. Oh, we got little Alice singing a lullaby. Winter had arrived in the woods. The chill cut like a razor. See, goddamn, this fucking music, dude. This music makes this game, bro. It makes this fucking game. The chill cut like a razor. The icy air so thick it could reach one's bones. Exposed cheeks stiffened and wisps of breath formed swirls in the air before disappearing. It was one degree above, uh, above freezing. The cold snap penetrated every nook and cranny of the woods, from the ground to the trees to the wildlife. The forest allowed nobody entry during the day. During the winter, it willed the animals to slumber. The still evening air 
felt like the stagnant breath of the lingering dead. The force consumed the moonlight, obscuring the sight of even the closest of pers uh, what the fuck? This game, bro. <laughs> Precipice? Is that how you say that? And hastening the untimely doom of any soul unfortunate enough to become lost within. Yeah, precipice. I think that's how you say that. It's like I've heard the word, I've never seen it spelled out. The only noises to be heard were the whisperings of the wind and the murmurings of the stream. The immortal darkness stifled any sense of life. Not the breath of an animal, much less that of a person, was drawn in this place. However, a figure in black, not of this place, skulked within. It cast the tiniest, frailest of silhouettes, like a small boat lost in a sea of fog. Its trepidatious footsteps echoed through the woods. There, exiting the veil of trees, was the unmistakable likeness of a young girl. The sea such cleft on the dish, no always does burn. Someone's here, someone's here. There they are, there they are. Who can they be? Who can they be? Someone and someone. Are you hungry? I'm starving. I, I am too. I'm fucking I'm starting to feel the uh the tummy rumbles. Which one should we eat? Let's eat them both. You take the left. You take the right. We must welcome them. We must entertain them. After all, we don't often have guests. While we're at it, the stomach and the tibia. It's not often we get to chew the fat. What the fuck? What's happening? The shadows in the trees laughed ominously. A, halluc a hallucination? An illusion? Or perhaps something real? The shadows frolicked in time to the girl's space or pace. Sa, 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 sa. Come, come, deeper and deeper. Do you remember the rig to rig the dice? Load and enters, they have. Nibbled around the edges, they be. What the fuck are these things talking about? <laughs> Just remember, don't roll that vital six. The girl knitted her eyebrows. Okay, so is she chasing these things or are they her ploys? Well, we're about to find out. She heard voices and felt the presence of things that should not be. Scary enough to frighten, uh, scary enough to frighten this peculiar girl or particular girl, <laughs> as if. Her tightly pursed lips betrayed not a hint of fear. The girl walked of her own volition. If she had truly felt fear, her legs would be frozen. Deep within the trees, she was perfectly aware of the two humanoid figures stalking her through the still night air. I saw them, I saw them. They're coming, they're coming. Give up. There's no going back. We warned you. It's your fault for staying. The girl halted her steps. Racket from the accompanying voices died in turn. The babbling brook suddenly sounded like a crackling fire. And then... Across the shallow stream, something appeared that should not exist in the city, much less these woods. Ghosts? I don't... <laughs> Good evening. 
I don't suppose I could speak to your master. The girl addressed them calmly. These men, in their Glasgow grins, creeped toward her like two slugs. So, Tada no Hakamori. Kanshi dake ga shigoto na no ne. I see. Simple graveyard wards sent to be lookouts. Shippai shita wa? Kore nara aoko ni makasereba yokatta. My mistake. I should have entrusted this to Alko. Ah, kedo. However, the one grinning man stood still, the other, shaking violently, as if unable to contain himself any longer, turned toward the girl. Alko still has a lot on her plate. Although you look far from the part, you seem to be on the level of a full-fledged mage. Her black outfit stirred. In her right hand, she held a... Oh, fuck. A vitreous cat. Darker than the deepest night. These fucking words, man. I don't under... Okay, not to... Not, this is not as a jab to the translator, but... How the hell can you put these type of words in, but then fuck up a simple sentence? You know? <laughs> like, when, like, earlier, when Kinomi was like, uh... What did I say about money... Uh... uh you know, buying happiness, but if they forgot to put the word say in the sentence, so it just sounded what did say like, what did I money about, you know, buying happiness? I don't get it. <laughs> but they're testing me. Hmm. Was this the one that she used against um uh Bayo? Beowulf? And it got like completely no no no. This is uh Yeah, no, it was, right? I think this was the one that she used against Beowulf. Unless it's just more of like a container that she uses, and this is a completely different uh, ploy. The two Glasgow men let out a yelp of caution and, in and, and incoherent fear. It was at this moment that they finally barred or bared their intent and emotion. Sayonara, okay. Farewell, my guests. Since this will take but a moment, I only offer a goodbye. The two shuddered at her words. They had no mouths, nor ears or brains to begin with. For creatures like these, words were redundant. All that existed, all, all that existed was the present. For these soulless creatures, fears and hopes were nothing more than an unimaginable future. Then, what gave you this feeling of foreboding they felt? The spine-chilling miracle that would rip them to pieces not moments from now. Come then, puppets. Let us make, or let us play make-believe. This music, man, I'm telling you, goes off. Her song sounded like a bell, echoing through the white woods. The girl's voice vanquished the frost that had gripped the trees. Then... Oh, little cows! Come now, don't keep us waiting. Come now, it's time for Little Red Riding Hood. The curtains open on Diddle Diddle. The banquet of the night. In confusion, one slit mouthed man swooped toward the girl. In fear, the other fled into the woods behind him. That man said, Nah, I'm good, bro. You can uh you can deal with this all on your own. <laughs> the deformed humanoid darted forth, kicking up water as it rushed the girl. She already knew what this fiend was. The grinny figure had scissors for hands and a demon's heart. It was a wretch who kidnapped children, mercilessly rendering them the, uh, re rendering them into pieces. Tweedle. Tweedle. Oh, Tweedle. I like Tweedle D and Tweedle. D oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> I just read the. Did you realize that? Leave it to us. It's finally our turn. 
The piglets bounded and rebounded like paddle balls. The stuffed animals, over three feet in length, jumped and weaved their way between the trees. Even with these strange creatures before him, the greeny man did not uh, did not so much as blink. He raised his arms, but what emerged from his coat sleeves were not the human appendages you would expect. In their place, fiendish cleavers, more than more than a foot and a half in length. These appendages, which had torn so much of their prey to pieces, sized cleanly through the flying piglet skulls. Hmm? His limbs froze in place. The pig's bodies were sliced perfectly in half. And then, bisected from head to tail, the pig's innards began, uh, began as alligator jaws and clamped down upon the grinning man's arms. From fingertips to shoulders, they were swallowed whole. You just said he doesn't have any normal arms. What? <laughs> it was all it took to rob the man of control over his entire body. Another shiver of fear. These were no mere pig familiars. Immediately, he realized that these were stapler uh, monsters disguised as mere pigs. I got him. No, I got him. Oh, but that too bad master has no words, no emotion, no interest. In the end, it doesn't really matter who did it. London Bridge is broken down. <laughs> Impossible. His presence murmured three times. Not possible. Not possible. Not possible. Talking pigs were one thing. Even having one's arms chopped off was in the realm of occupational hazard. In an instant, the wood was uh, enveloped in a dense wave of magical energy. Though vexing, it was still impressive. None of these facts were particularly extraordinary. These rough familiars, their bizarre attacks, the sheer innate magical energy to overwhelm others. He had experience with all these things. His employer was skilled enough to achieve all of this as well. However, What now, what now? How long should we hold him like this? Even a blink of an eye is too long. Let's take an arm. I'll give you a good price if you pay me in pounds. What were they? Not vessels. Not living creatures. Not beings powered by magic circuits. Even though only his arms had been bitten, none of his body would move. It was like nothing was being bounded or weakened. This felt more like he had become words in a written book, fated to keep their page. As the grinning figure's deformities uh, indicated, he had overcome numerous curio curiosities and monstrosities. Illusions, enthrallment, compulsions, freezings, oh fuck, uh, perturfactors, or factions, there you go, and even uh, petrifications, a power granted to only the pinnacle of mystic eyes. From poisons to magecraft, he had weathered a great deal. But this was something different altogether. The penalty that bounded him now was based on different principles from blood, flesh, oxygen, and heat, or heat. It was an unknown restraint that followed no rules he knew. Indeed, though it was terrifying to admit, it was as if he had encountered something alien to everything in this world. <laughs> it's funny to think that she's just doing this whole lullaby while this creature's being ripped apart. <laughs> yeah, I was like, can hey, you stop singing? <laughs> 
Fang sank into his left and right shoulders. For the first time in this form, he felt rage seethe upon him, or up inside him. The bias of all things had to be absolute. All mystics, all things bizarre obeyed some set of laws. But these pigs ignored this, along with his dignity. After three days, you weaken. After six, you drown. After half a year, you'll be a wretched skeleton. Sorry to be rude, but we'll just kill you now. A howl. Though he had no voice, he let out an, ex uh, an exasperated scream. Huh? Huh? What a convenient function to be able to detach your arms. What an unparalleled warrior. I mean, it's like, I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> The talkative pigs fell into the stream. The exasperated, no, the what, yeah, exasperated scream was the sound of the figure tearing his uh, arms from their sockets. Armless, he rushed to the girl. <laughs> Useless swine. I'll see you be punished later. He may have lost his mangled arms, but not the object of his malice. A mystic eye to pierce the heart of its victim. <clears throat> a magic circuit designed to stop a beating heart. It was beautiful in its simplicity. At point blank range, it was the equivalent of an unavoidable shotgun blast. But, tragically, that eye was all he had. Oh, there he is. The, uh, the behemoth that, uh, that fucking Beowulf slaughtered in two seconds. <laughs> he failed to realize that her song had changed. Oh. <laughs> For the giant... The earth-shattering strike was akin to the act of shooting an insect away. It was green. Verdant veins pulse. Or it's, it's green, dang it. Oak and bark covered his body, hardened sufficiently over centuries to repel even a chainsaw. On his forehead, inscribed in all manner of colors, was the word emeth. Though judging from its misspelling, the inscription was purely decorative. Decorative, yeah. The Thames Troll. It also went by the moniker falling down or alternatively alternatively alternative what the hell alternative alternatively there you go the great bridge god I, <laughs> this game bro admired in different forms it was the first of four miracles yeah this was the one that fought uh that fought beowulf Near the end of the game. Names, please take care of the other one. The giant responded to the girl's words. With roots rent deep into the earth, it raised his left arm to the heavens without moving a step. Oh, my man just went offline. Elsewhere in the forest, the grinning figure who had chosen to flee the battle was running through the night, uh, running through the night forest at full speed. Uh, record and provide a detailed description of the enemy. Those were the orders assigned to him. He poured all of his energy into escaping this forest, which with which he had become so familiar. In case of emergency, the plan was for one to challenge the enemy, while the other made a tactical retreat in order to report to their master. He, ja he dashed through the woods. Though gripped by fear, he was confident in his ability to perform the mission he was designed for. Nothing could catch him in these woods. All except... <laughs> Even the wolves could not track him. 
His bird-like legs thumped as they kicked the ground. Perhaps it was his creator's uh, eccentric taste that dedicated or that dictated their form when optimizing them for running. The greeny man could reach a maximum speed of 45 miles per hour, well past the limit of any bipedal creature. After securing a distance of several miles, he turned to confirm he was uh, to confirm his safety. There was no sign of pursuit. His crescent-shaped mouth, nay, eyes slackened in relief. And then... After facing forward once more, he looked up to lock eyes with his doom. London Bridge is broken down, broken down, broken down. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> In the distance, he could hear the dark rhymes of Mother Goose. Countless vines extended from the ground. They formed into a monstrosity that conjured up images of the arched bridge, something resembled, or something resembling a giant arm. London Bridge is broken down, my fair lady. Deleted. <laughs> Final report. Survival. Unable to complete. Analysis. Unable to complete. Transmission. Unable to complete. Ending session. Ah. Uh, oh, master. Preserve me from... And he dies. Wait, so who's the master? Are we assuming it's, um... I forgot her name. Toko? There you go. Is it Toko? I think we're about done here. Well done, Thames. You can return now. Hopefully, our next encounter will be more worth our time. The girl turned on her heel. The invaders who had set up shop in the woods were eliminated. She had no interest in whether they had been good or evil, nor how many victims they had claimed. The, sh the shackles of civic society held no sway over her. This was the way of a pure-blooded witch, the way of a monster. Hey, what about us? What about us? <laughs> How do we get this arm out of my teeth? We really shouldn't move while we're eating. Don't tell us you don't eat pigs that can that can't fly. We'll do a better job next time, though we're nothing but screw ups. Yeah. You owe, you owe us at least one compliment before the end. The girl let out a sigh and stepped into the stream. She removed her gloves and dipped her slender fingers into the ice water. I told you not to roll sixes. But I suppose it's the only number you can roll. There was no response to her melancholy tone. In place of the once boisterous pigs were two black dice now sitting in the palm of her hand. As the girl was about to say something to the scattered remains around her, she realized something that made her put her hand to her mouth. The farewell is over. I should have asked them if they had any last words. Her slender, pale fingers traced her lips, as if reluctant to part from them. Sighing again, she calmly left the dark woods the same way she had entered. Alright, I'm assuming that's the end of this one.
Perfect. All right. Ooh, sorry if I'm all burpy over here, but let's get through this last one here because I am hungry. So let's get on to it. The final volume, Seven Days of Spinning, volume four. Let us rewind to a moment in the recent past. The scene took place on a Saturday morning in early December. All right, looks like we're at the school now. With third period over just before lunch, the only activity that remained before the scholastic day end, uh, ended was homeroom. Uh, two classes, uh, two class C students, uh, Sojo Suzuki and Hosuke Konomi, were standing outside on the balcony overlooking the schoolyard. They were stuck waiting for their homeroom teacher, Mr. Kazuki y uh, Yamashiro, and could not leave until he arrived. The rest of the classmates were chatting idly in the classroom. Oh, the homeboy Tobimaru. Class A's Tobimaru uh, Tsukiji was killing time alongside them. The listless trio discussed their weekend plans as they leaned on the uh, veranda's railing. You working at the bear this weekend, Konami? <laughs> like hell I am. Who the hell works till Sunday? I'm going out tomorrow with some chicks from Class B. At least, that was the plan. They said they're grounded or something. That dog, they don't want to be with you. <laughs> Damn cold hard truth from Sojiro here. So, in other words, you failed again. Please, kick a man when he's down much, Suzuki? Please, even the most airheaded chicks know better than to uh, to accept an invite from your dumbass. Crash and burn all you like, but don't drag Sonoji into the fallout, will you? Huh? <laughs> well, excuse me, your majesty. You're the one to talk. <laughs> Word to the wise, Suzuki. Tsukiji's heart is as black as they come. In his mind, he's like, you know those labels you put, you use to separate the trash? This dude uses them to label people, uh, to label people. You're either useful to him, or you ain't. Yeah, I figured that out. Damn. <laughs> he literally like, yeah, I pretty much think, uh, saw as much. Speaking of which, I know this is a bit out of the blue, but what do you think about Kinomi, Tobimaru? So Hmm, well, you know how the country is going to stop collecting oversized scrap for free soon? Since it costs so much to dispose of? That's because of people like him. Huh? What kind of nonsense is that? Who throws up big stuff like cabinets when you can make good money off of them? The feature is grab and go, you know? Just look at how those rad uh, look just look how rad those disposable cameras you can buy at the convenience stores are. Uh, what they call it, something about growing consumption culture and all that. I'm just Hmm. So Kenobi's working this weekend. What about you, Tobimaru? Look, my time is coming. Just watch. Well, 
There's some business to attend on, on uh, to on my end. I'll be entertaining a guest of my father's. I'm giving a tour of the city. Stuff like that. <laughs> hey, friggin' rude. Don't interrupt the guy when he's talking. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm gonna be helping, I'm gonna be watching my kid's sister. I'm helping out that crappy Chinese restaurant. What about you, Sonoji? You working tomorrow? No, no plans, but I'm gonna work at the amusement park after school today. <laughs> what? Magic Kitsy Land? Seriously? You're tougher than you look, Suzuki. I heard even the judo guys who work there bailed. Nanto, Masaka, Nekokrono Nimotakovi or It couldn't be possible, but it couldn't possibly be worse than carrying boxes for X Fed, right? X Fed. <laughs> Fucking X Fed. Not FedEx. I think that's funny. That's funny. <clears throat> Also, it's kind of like weird when you think about X Fed. It's like, oh, he's an X Fed of, you know, federal, you know, some shit. <laughs> X Fed. That's funny. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> well, okay, not that bad. Damn. That a hole Yamashiro is taking a sweet time. Look, Class B is already leaving. Looks like it. You know, I don't want to pull this card, but we'll just have to call him. We can't let Sonoji be late for work. As if by design, the moment Tobimaru Sakiji stood up uh, way, uh, wearily from the balcony railing, the school's PA system ch uh, chime rang. Sojo Suzuki, Class 2C. Please report immediately to Yamashiro in the faculty room. I repeat, Sojo Suzuki, Class 2C. An awkward silence fell upon the three. After a long five minutes, Sojo said goodbye and headed back inside. Ugh. Nothing interesting ever happens here. Can't someone make a crop circle in the schoolyard or something? Kanomi grumbled, clutching his shoulders and succumbing to his lethargy. Stop expecting others to make life interesting. If you're bored, make something happen to yourself. Challenge Ozaki uh, to an inner class debate or something. Suffering ain't interesting. Grappling with the press is asking for it. I said interesting, not terrifying. As a decent, upstanding red-blooded male, I'd happily settle for a hot transfer, uh, transfer student showing up. <laughs> as long as she isn't boring, anyway. Maybe if she were a Hollywood producer or some famous English singer or... <laughs> Lame. If you're gonna go that far... At least make her a babe from Mars. Attention, Class 2C. This is an announcement from Mr. Yamashiro. Mr. Yamashiro is... Uh, Mr. Yamashiro, I keep saying Shiro. 
Mr. Amasiro is currently occupied and is unable to attend homeroom. Please make your way home. That concludes all announcements for today. The hell? Ever since Yamashiro bought that new car, he's been a real punk. I ought to find out what this dime sounds like when scraping up a new Serbia. Hold it, Hotshot. Just put gum in the keyhole. Teachers get paid peanuts, man. The two frenemies return to the classroom, complaining all the while. Their concern for their mutual friend summoned to the faculty office, completely out of mind. I don't agree. The school allows for students to hold part-time jobs. According to school regulations, a job at the workplace authorized by the school is recommended as a social experience. That's true, but in his case, it's a matter of going too far. What if, let's suppose, he were, ta or he were working somewhere without permission, somewhere that might be violating the labor standards law? It would spell trouble for both the school and for him. The volatile tension between the ruthless student council president and the easygoing modern language teacher permeated the room. Praying to be spared from the impending confrontation, the other teachers hurriedly relocated to the meeting room. The other teachers are like, yo, bro, fucking. They're like, god damn, Aoko's always fucking coming in here, bro. Stirring up shit. Let's just let's just leave. Let's just leave. <laughs> By the time Mr. Yamashiro noticed this, the only other person in the room was the student council president, Aoko Alzaki. <laughs> They all ran, huh? Why does everyone always push the scary jobs on me? Ah, they're so mean. Please don't change the subject, sir. If we do suppose that he's working at an unauthorized workplace, doesn't that mean that the school isn't accommodating to his needs? I'm not saying that the school needs to cover his room and board, but as long as he's not working too much, his request deserves a due consideration. And if you're still concerned about unauthorized workplaces, Please first revise the rule that limits each student to only one. After hearing her out and realizing there was no way she would back down, Mr. Yamashiro hung his head. This was supposed to be easy. The plan was to call in the student rumor to be working multiple jobs and confirm whether the rumor was true, and if so, give him a warning and some guidance, then head to lunch with the knowledge that this was uh, that what knowledge that all was right in the world. The student council president who coincidentally in the faculty room at the time, heard the entire issue and decided to call out this injustice. As far as Mr. Yamashiro was concerned, she was in the right, and he was well aware of the aforementioned student situation. Personally, he would like to help, but among the faculty, he was just the new kid on the block. He wanted to stay on the vice president of uh, the vice president's, <laughs> the vice principal's good side, and at the very least not lose his job, as badly as it uh, paid, uh, as badly paid as it was. Look, this was all a warning straight from the vice president. Or vice president, I said it, I said it again. From the vice principal. I can't do anything more to help. What if we compromised? Hmm? Hmm? What do you mean? 
the student council president removed a document from her bag. It was a document that had been brought up in the morning's faculty meeting, bringing a host of headaches with it. Miss Ozaki, that's not the... Yes, it's the Ada Church's vo uh, volunteer registration form. There were zero applicants again this month. A fact that would certainly bother a devout Christian like the, the vice principal. Almost a president again! Damn it! Hmm. Even this morning, he was lamenting our students' lack of faith. I can't deny that. What I'd really like to know is how you became so well informed of the content of this morning's faculty meeting. Mr. Yamashiro scratched his head, but his eyes were smiling gleefully. He had figured out the student council president's objective. So, I'll scratch your back and you'll scratch mine? Is that it? Hmm. I don't know what you mean. Work conducted on the church's behalf is done on voluntary, ba on voluntary basis, but still compensated in some form, and it's officially recognized by the school as a form of social study. Social study. Hmm. The vice principal would be overjoyed to have a participant and In the event that said volunteers already employed somewhere else, the school's permission would be extended to both. Considering the precedent, I find this to be a good compromise. Mr. Yamashiro raised his head, or raised his hands in surrender. There were few students able to both raise a com uh, complaint and uh, propose a proper solution. Perhaps it was her big sisterly disposition that made this girl so simultaneously feared and get trusted. Alright, let's try your way. Just say a prayer for me, okay? Oh. Son of a bitch, what did I just do? Yes. Sono Hoko de Sim Tariki Honga wa Kirai des. There we go. Varudakumini not the Kurero no Nara, Kitchin to Katiak Stekasa, Yamashiro Sensei. I don't like it when people are overly reliant on others. If you're going to participate in the scheme, please take your part seriously, Mr. Yamashiro. With a bow, the student council president turned to leave the faculty room. Ah, matta, matta. ah, wait a second. You're not going anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and call in Suzuki now. I'll need you to stay and look after him properly. Huh? What? The girl's cool eyes narrowed. Unable to process what she had just heard, her expression turned to a scowl. <laughs> well, if we're looking for volunteers, two is better than one, right? Plus, knowing that you're following up on this would give me a great peace of mind. But, but sir, I, I don't. Ah, Hososhi, Ninen Shigumi no Shizuki Soju Rokun, Shikyu Shokuin Sni Kitekudasai. Hello, broadcasting room. Please put out an announcement for uh, asking for class uh, 2C student uh, Sojo Suzuki to report to Mr. Yamashiro in the staff room immediately. No, sir, like I was about to say. Ah, this is perfect. And to think that the source of my headache would go away too. Today is my lucky day. Ah, Mr. 
Miss Aozaki, what would I do without your kindness? Wait a second. He's not your type, is he? Oh, broadcasting room. Please add the following. The student council president is eagerly awaiting. <laughs> Mr. Yamashiro! Do a fucking chair at him. <laughs> Oh, well, so we're back at the apartment. The next day, a pleasant Sunday. Sojo was awake two hours before the time he was supposed to meet her. After getting up, he decided to go for a leisurely jog to clear his mind, but lost among his own thoughts. His 30 minute jog turned to almost an hour. Upon realizing, he rushed home. Okay, so this is before he actually met her formally. Uh, after thoroughly racking his brain over what to wear for the occasion, he decided upon wearing a school uniform. Ten o'clock, Misaki Central Park, East Entrance. I'll meet you there. Yesterday in the faculty room, when Aoko Ozaki had shared the time and place with him that day, she said it was such a pain on her face. Maybe she was fighting a headache at the time. I wonder if Aozaki is feeling better. Sojo muttered, his words of concern misguided as they were. In any case, he waited for about five minutes. At precisely 10 o'clock, the student council president appeared. Good morning. Punctual as usual, I see. Hmm. What's wrong with your face? Are you sick? No? I think I feel fine. He waved off her... Uh, uh, he, <coughs> God damn. Hopefully this ends soon. My throat is starting to fucking... Uh, what's it called on me? He waved off her concern. You're wearing your school uniform. <laughs> of course I'm wearing my uniform. This is a school activity, isn't it? A heavy wave of oh, fuck, despondency. Is that you say that? A heavy weight of despondency fell upon soldiers. Uh, soldiers, the angsting over his outfit for the previous two hours had been rendered meaningless just like that. Because oh, I guess he wanted to surprise her, be like, "Hey, guess what? I'm wearing. I, I'm a cool. I'm a good guy." <laughs> a duo, clad in their school uniforms, on an off day, walked by the train station. In the beginning. Alko made some efforts to give Sojo a thorough lay of the land, but today she only shared the bare minimum of explanations. This was partly because, surprisingly, Sojo had become well accustomed to the town. Which restaurants were good, which shortcuts to use in a rush, and uh, and why the nearby bicycle shop was better than the department store by the station if you want to buy a bicycle. Things a local would know. Well, the other reason was because it had dawned on Alko that uh, how the two of them conversing might look to a passerby. <laughs> on a different topic, do you mind telling me what kind of work we'll be doing today? From here on, volunteering at the church meant that the school would tolerate his multiple jobs. Sajro had quickly agreed to the tempting offer, nodding like a bobblehead. A bobblehead, that's funny. But as, but, as was typical for him, he had failed to consider the, con the, the content of the proposal. <laughs> Somehow, I just knew you had no idea what we were going to be doing today. Is this your first time going to Ida Church? <laughs> this is my second time. The last time was because I was outside admiring the strange architecture. And then a person inside gave me some free candy. <laughs> he pondered with all sincerity how exactly a church worked. His contemplative posture made him appear the part of a philosopher. But all we was thinking, he concluded. I guess they just take your money on the second visit? Such was the extent of Sojo's concern. <laughs> Normally, the church only gives candy out to children, you know. Alko sighed at the lost little lamb. 
でどんな人に会ったの神父それともシスター So, who did you meet,、uh, end up meeting? The priest? One of the sisters? それはそれは綺麗な女の人だった A very beautiful woman, as it happens. Ja, Yuika san no hone. Kyo atta la ore o te hitsio naika. Anta no koto dakara, so no atari wa kichito s t e r d a o s h i Oh, sister,、uh, sister Yuka then? If we see her today, you'll need to thank her. Or, then again, no need. You're just doing fine in that department anyway. Shigoto no hanashi nara kantan yo. Bako de a t e r koto to kawara naika. As far as work goes, it's not much different from what you've been doing at school, so it should be straightforward. And considering the church's size, there's actually not a lot of people. Alko picked up her pace as they headed for the church. Somehow, she seemed like a general invading enemy territory. It made Sojiro furrow his brows in discomfort. Ooh, the church, once again. Ada Church had a long history. From、uh, far from the station, it was a white painted sanctuary,、uh, sanctuary uh, nestled between the businesses and、uh, residential districts. As far as Alco could remember, the church as she knew it,、uh, knew it now was the result of remodeling done eight years prior. It was practically a cathedral for a town of its size. Of this size. Incidentally, Located next to it was the Misaki City General Hospital. From m a r o k o s perspective, it seemed awfully suspicious for the church to take up residence next to the location of the city where the most lives were lost. Though, the only two who were aware of this opinion were her roommate, Alice Kuonji, and the priest. Aozaki was in the church. Are you a regular at this place? I was in the church. もう過去に戻って改ざんしたいぐらいみじんもないけどうちの父と祖父は長い付き合い Me? Not in the slightest My father and grandfather had a long history with it But if I could I'd go back in time and cut, all cut, cut off all our ties to this place ここの手伝いなんて忌まいましいことに小学生の頃は毎日してたもんだけど I had to come here every day in elementary school to help out And boy, did that ever rub me the wrong way The more Alko spoke, the more twisted her expression became. Recalling this made her want to grab it by the proverbial collar. Proverbial collar.、Uh, give it the proverbial one arm judo back throw, smash his proverbial head, proverbial head into the proverbial ground, and kick the proverbial living daylights out of its defenseless proverbial torso. <laughs> God damn. I think that's enough of that word in my entire lifetime, dog. Such was her so called trauma that if it were、uh, anthropomorphic, fuck, anthropomorphized, it would take more than a 500,、uh, five round beating to satisfy her thirst for vengeance. It was in this moment, as he became aware of Aoko's mood, that Sojo began to fear for his safety. Perhaps attracted by this noisy murder of crows outside the church, a woman in a nun's,、uh, uh, nun's habit emerged from the front entrance. 失礼ですが、どちらのお客様でしょう ?Excuse me, do you have any business with the church today? 当教会は暴力団関係の方はご遠慮いただいておりますので、日を改める、あるいは生き方を食い改めた後、社会的な罪を償ってから門をくぐっていただきたいのですが。I'm afraid this church does not associate with criminals, so if you would be so kind as to consider coming another day, Or perhaps returning once you have repented of your、uh, sinful ways and paid for your crimes to society, you can. It's Aoko Aozaki, Sister Yuka. If you don't know, she's blind. That's why her eyes are closed. Well, if it is an Aoko. What a lovely surprise! It's been such a long time since you visited. So, this is it. It's more your new barate. Simp summer to Dakio Hanasho stay mascara. You eat a santoa. I suppose it has. I'm, I, I'm only ever called at night to speak with the father. 
まあ意外ですね1年近くまともにお話をしていません I suppose it's been what close to a year since we had a face to face conversation まこの先だって一度もないでしょうけど<laughs> And who knows how long it'll be until the next time ええあなたも随分と立派になられたようでがっかりです何より今の気配は清らかな少女とは思えないほど悪辣でしたあ、uh, yes I'm almost sad to see you grow up so fast Your presence has become so menacing You hardly resemble the virtuous girl I remember so well On the surface the two exchange uh fuck congeal con congeal I don't fucking know they, they exchange greetings pretty much Unable to read between the lines all Sergio could see was the two good friends 今月のボランティアは私とそこの彼です。He and our this month's volunteers。親愛なる間教会のためですから、10時から3時まで1分の狂いもなくきっかり働かせていただきますわ。For the beloved Ida Church, it would be our pleasure to be working from exactly 10 to 3, and not a minute more. まあ、世も末ですが歓迎しますね。Well, as you know, we are reaching The end times, but your spirit of service is welcome. The house of the Lord is open to all who might enter, even those with wickedness in their hearts. The nun flashed a smile that was equal parts elegant and cruel. Keeping, an up,、uh, keeping up appearances aside, she seemed overjoyed to be able to,、uh, to, able, uh, to have able hands to put to work. The sister introduced herself as Yuka Suse and thanked Sojuro, who had volunteered on his own volition. Sojuro noticed that her eyes were always shut, but not wanting to be rude, especially in front of Aoko, decided not to pry. So, you're Mr. Suzuki. Your name is as calm as your countenance. It is? Uh, well, thanks. The sister let slip a frown at Sojo's. Uh, what? Fuck, man. <laughs> These words, bro. These, the sister let out a frown at Sojo's ambivalent response to her compliment. I apologize. I did not mean to cause discomfort by using your surname. May I call you Sojo instead? Oh, uh, whichever. Either one is fine. Well, then, as you wish. I had not appreciated how difficult a subject it would be. Though the sister's tone was gentle, her words seemed somewhat indifferent. She liked sight. But she guided the two with certainty in her step. Well, then, as for what you will be doing, I already know. Christmas is coming up, so you want to get all of the tedious cleaning out of the way, right? That won't be a problem. Cleaning is our strong suit. It wasn't their strong suit as much as it was Sojuro's. Then, Aoko, you'll be at the stove preparing the communion wafers. This is Suzuki. You'll be outside. I will need your help cleaning the areas I cannot reach. Uh, one question. Ritsuka isn't in the kitchen, is she? You can't make me go in there if she is. <laughs> Don't worry. Ritsuka is not here now. It's not here right now. There's no need to hold back on her account. Ritsuka is her sister. With a dismissive wave, Alko headed toward the door in the back of the worship hall. 
As she indicated, she was quite accustomed with this church. This way, please, Mr. Suzuki. We'll start with the storeroom. I'd like to ask you to carry the cleaning supplies. Can this end, please? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm being serious now. Can this end? God damn, I didn't realize this last volume was going to be crazy. Like, bro, the first two volumes were like super quick, easy, done. It was like done in like 40 minutes. Then the third volume was a little long. I was like, that's yeah, fine. It's okay. Now this one's just like, yeah, we're, this is a full-fledged story, man. I mean, to be fair, it is a story, but... All right. The work entrusted to Sojiro did not require any particular skill. It was window cleaning at its most standard. Should I clean all the windows? Yes. Start with the wet rag, then wipe with a dry rag. Then use the cleaning spray. Is that ladder tall enough? Well, first of all, you would use the cleaning spray, then a wet rag, then a dry rag, but you know. Whatever goes, goes, right? Oh, uh, it looks like it might be a little short. Then just clean what you can reach. Thank you very much. After the brief, brief exchange, the sister returned to the church. Sojourn began to wonder if it was out of distrust in him that she was being so curt. He understood that it was too soon to glean an answer for their first meeting. But then again, such answers were always eluded Sojourn. Left alone, but no less encouraged, Sojourn began cleaning the windows. The day's weather was a disappointment once again. It had not gone far, so far as to rain, but it was too overcast to enjoy the sun. He leaned outside the tall ladder and began, and, and beginning with the window about five yards from the ground, quietly cleaned. Sojo was never the kind of person to mind physical labor. In fact, if there had been a blue sky, if there had been a blue sky, this might have been a perfect day off to him. Alright, I need you to get off my screen, but I can't read that. By the time he finished his third and fourth or fourth window, he felt very relaxed and began to whistle. Though 15 feet was an imitating, uh, intimidating height, he uh, provided a wonderful view at the same time. Turning toward the town, Sojo gave a clear view of the tree-topped hill that had previously, previously caught his eye. God, God help me. So there really is a house in the woods. The hill in the woods, just outside of town. From here, the forest overlooking the sleepless city looked like a foreign castle. <laughs> well, well, do we have a burglar? I'm guessing that's Ritsuka. Mm -hmm. Just then, lost in his thoughts while wiping windows, Sojo, oh, first of all, who the fuck thing? If you see a guy cleaning windows, why would your first thought be a burglar? What? <laughs> then again, it's not every day you see a high school student in their outfit cleaning, but you know, still. Lost in his thoughts while wiping windows, Sojo was pulled out of his trance by someone pacing below him. He looked down and saw a girl, her unkept clothes otherwise contrasting her kind visage. Mm, Hmm, but well, you look a little too loosey-goosey to be a thief. Wait, I know. Maybe you're that type that jumps out of people's front of fireplaces and gives them toys when they don't need. Like that one saint. She's talking about Santa. Wow, I'm a Oh? But I just can't stand his beard. You know, all that guy is doing is breaking and entering, right? She looked about to be in her late 20s. Despite the cold, she was not wearing a coat. She had no purse either, which was rather strange as a woman and her purse were never far apart. Not that Sojo knew the, this truth quite yet. Based on the fact that none of this seemed to apply to her, one could have easily surmised that she herself was a little loosey-goosey. Card short full of a deck, a card short of a full deck, one might say. 
私ピンときたわ Oh, I got it 君、ミサコのバイトの子えらいわ今時の高校生は業者さん顔負けなのね Oh, are you that part-timer from Asaki High? Well, or, wow, high schoolers these days really are something. You put the pros to shame. The girl looked up in admiration to Sojuro as he stood up a, a, atop his ladder. Cool, let me help. <laughs> Is there another ladder? Or rags? Ah, since we're doing this anyway, why don't we just use the hose? You know, spray water all over the place, yelling and having a good time. We might get in trouble, but a little fun never hurt anybody, right? And Sojo's like, Bitch, who are you? <laughs> the girl let out a hearty laugh. Her smile glowed like a cactus that sprouted legs and began to run. What? In, in so much as a running cactus could uh, could only cause trouble. As Sojuro anticipated, the girl began to clean without waiting for his approval. For the love of God, please end. Yeah, so I was walking, so as I was walking by the church, I saw a figure stuck to the window. A daylight burglary? It seems pretty bold, I thought, but my curiosity got the best of me. Imagine my surprise when I saw such a cute boy working as diligently as a as a window wiping expert. You can't blame a girl for wanting to help out after seeing that, can you? Wiping the window next to Sojuro, the girl continued to cheerfully chatter. Although this was all kinds of suspicious, Sojuro politely followed her lead, nodding and agreeing as she, as she spoke. Perhaps it was an instinctive com uh, camaraderie. Uh, he says his girl was just like him, always getting the short end of the stick when it came to minimal work. Or menial, you know, menial work. So, are you from the church? Me? No, I was just passing by. More importantly, why are you acting like you've never met like we've never met before? Don't you remember all those times we met in the shopping mall? No? When did that happen? All the time, silly. You work at that restaurant, Otatsu, right? I was there several times just this week. This is not Ritsuka, I thought it was. Maybe she just wasn't calling her name at the moment. I'm, uh, all right. I'm Hanazawa. What's your name? Hanazawa took a quick glance at the flower bed uh, before in the middle of the, her introduction, then gave him a friendly lap. Okay, so she looked at the flower bed, saw flowers, like, that's what I'm, that's my name. Okay, so it is Ritsuka. Such a self-introduction, however, was his usual brand of awkward. Sojuro, huh? Your name's cute, in an old-fashioned kind of way. The Zhou in your name means ten, right? Names with numbers in them are so Japanese, don't you think? Do you know that the priests and sisters here? Eri and Yuka? Their names sound so foreign. I don't know, Eri, but Yuka was the woman with the pretty dark hair, right? Oh, so you haven't met the priest yet? 
間だ教会の美形神父と美人姉妹って言ったら有名なんだけどあそうかさては君最近引っ越してきたんでしょうしかも一人暮らしと見たわ Ida Church is famous for its handsome priest and beautiful sisters, you know? Oh, that's right. You just moved here. You're living on your own, right? He's like, how the fuck do you know that? <laughs> yes. You're really sharp, Miss Hanazawa. You seem to be pretty good at guessing things about me. It's called deductive reasoning, silly. This town doesn't have much to do for fun. Probably not enough that a kid like you would need to work this much. Normally, you just need one job to cover spending money. You don't seem like the,、uh, the materialistic type either. Which leaves living expenses as the only wholesome reason for working this hard, right? Hmm, then again, it's not very wholesome for a student to be paying, his,、uh, paying for his own room, board, and tuition. Yeah, so でもないですよ。働かざるもの、食うべからずです。Not necessarily. Don't they say that he who does not work doesn't eat? So, Jiro san wa wakai no ni lippa ne. Watashi mo gakusei no koro wa baito san mai datta kara. Skoshi wa kimi no taihen san mo wakaru wa yo. Wow, Sojiro. You're pretty mature for your age. When I was a student, I was completely absorbed in work too. So I understand how difficult things must be for you. Nanto, Hanazawa san mo hitori grashi datta ndes ka? Oh, you live by yourself as well, Miss Hanazawa? Eh, Yeah, I studied aboard over my parents' objections. I went to the same school as a friend and we roomed together to save money. But food wasn't free, you know? Or as you know. That being said, I'm the kind of person who doesn't mind a bit of elbow grease. Looking back on it now, my time at school and work were a great memory. Oh. Sojuro nodded agreeably. Dignified or not, he could barely hold back the sense of solidarity that was welling up in, with him. As, oh, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> The sense of solidarity that was willing up with him. <laughs> well, since this might be fate, I'll probably be seeing more of you at Oetsu or Otatsu from here on out. Come see me if you need someone to talk to. I can't promise that I'll be much help. But I'll do my best impression of a sounding board. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Maybe you can help me out right now. What do they do here? As Sojo said here, he pointed at the church. Uh, uh, what do you mean? Even Hanazawa was taken aback by his question. I know where Sojuro's,、uh, of Sojuro's background, combined with her quick witted nature, Hanazawa, quickly,、uh, Hanazawa seemingly mistook his question for some kind of sophisticated wit. Hmm, good question. I guess people treat it as a spiritual sanctuary. Is that the right word for it? No. Maybe not sanctuary. More like a shield or a place that plugs leaks,、uh, that plugs leaks in your mind. It's basically a way for people to avoid getting better. Ah, 
Oh, and they give out free bread and wine. For free? Sure, I mean, I've heard rich people just donate a bunch of money anyway. これが一番大きいんだけど、収入に税金がかからない。心の安全は扱いが難しいけど、きちんと売り物にできれば、ノーリスク入りたんよ。Oh yeah, one more thing. And this is the most important wrinkle. Their income isn't taxed. Saving souls is tough work, but it's no risk high reward if you got a solid business plan. ほう。よくわからないですけど。is that so? Hmm. I don't really follow, but are you saying that this it's a good place to come when you're in trouble? <laughs> hmm, I wouldn't recommend that. I think it would be better to visit it to visit once a month uh, once a month or so, just for a little peace of mind. The rag squeaked as the two carefree souls continued to wipe the windows. Whistling as they went, they shined one window, then another, then another. Oh yeah, one more question. What are those woods over there? Woods? What woods? Oh, you mean the woods on the mountain? Oh, I hope so. Why the fuck would you find woods? Well, yeah, but that's really more of a hill than a mountain. As someone raised in the countryside, soldiers probably would not allow for a mound of dirt to be called a mountain. Damn. So, you think so? Any incline that takes energy uh, that takes energy to climb is a mountain in my book, but if you say so. If it was a, it, it was if as the shadow fell over her, till now sunny disposition. She was undoubtedly a beautiful woman with very lovely features, but as Sodra looked at her in that moment, her smile melted away, and he saw how disturbed she was at his comment. And when it comes down to it. <laughs> Oh, it's definitely a hill. Oh, and uh, what about that thing that looks like a chimney? Sojo was not one to closely watch people's reactions and fuss over his speech. It looks like a chimney because it is a chimney. あの森は全部私有地なんだけど、その中にでっかい洋館が建っているの。でも私有地だから地元の人間も入ったことはないんじゃないかしら。that forest is all private property, and a huge mansion sits right in the middle of it. None of the no locals really know anything about it because they're not allowed in there. People call it the Kuonji Haunted Mansion. The locals are all spooked by it, so it's probably best that you keep your distance. For a tiny wooded area, there's been all kinds of freaky stories about the place. Weird accidents, wild dog sightings, you name it. <laughs> wild dogs? You get wild dogs in the city here too? Lots of them. They're even more in the empty lot behind the church. The priest here is a bit e e eccentric. And one time he gave them some bread. And the pubs made it their area of their patrol route. Mm hmm. Hmm. Anyway, don't go up there. You know what they say about idiots in high places. It's something of an unspoken rule around here to stay out. Well, 
For one thing, it's private property, so if you trespass, someone's going to call the cops, and then you're going to spend the rest of the day getting grilled at the station. That doesn't sound like much fun, does it? Sojiro nodded, along to her story as he stared at the far-off chimney from his vantage point on the ladder. A teeny part of him, a teeny tiny part of him was curious about that hill, because it reminded him of the woods where he grew up. But after reminding himself that it was none of his business, he returned to window washing. I might have to split this video up, man, because I'm already going on two hours, dude. <laughs> I might have to split this this whole section up because, dude, this, this last volume is, is a lot longer than I thought it was, but here we go. Thanks to Hanazawa's lending a hand, he was able to finish the job without a hitch. Between the two of them, they had accomplished a simple but very time-consuming task. Nice work. I hardly recognize these windows, considering how filthy they were before. Why don't we head to a cafe somewhere and get something to drink? I'll treat you as a reward for all your- Hi. Miss Hanazawa, you were in the middle of saying something? Oh, sorry. I just remember some urgent business I needed to attend to. I'll catch you later. Ciao. By the time Sojuro, who had started putting away the ladder, turned around, he was able to catch a glimpse of the girl's figure dashing towards the street at lightning speed. It was just before 3 o'clock. More than three hours had passed since Hanazawa offered to help. Hmm. Sojuro watched the girl with many strange faces disappear. For someone who seemed to have been on the aimless walk, Hanazawa had spent a good deal of time with him. Maybe helping Sojuro out reminded her of something she needed to do. Suzuki, are you out there? The student council president popped her head out of the corner of the church. Ah, don't mind me, uh, do your thing. The sight of Sojuro putting away a ladder taller than himself seemed to have provoked an emotional response in Alko. Then, in an instant, he rolled up her sleeves and began to approach him. Oh. Hmm? This surprised him more than Aoko's sudden appearance. Ignoring Sojuro's bewilderment, Aoko promptly began issuing orders. Put the ladder on his side. I'll hold at the bottom. So you take the top. He did all of this so matter of fact, matter of factly, that Sojuro began lowering the ladder before he had even had a chance to insist that he could do it by himself. With work finished and the sisters' thanks, uh, thank you gifts in hand, the two put the church behind them. Since Aoko apparently had something to do around the station. They decided to walk together until they got there. You're a really hard worker, huh? Beneath the orange tinged sky, Alko spoke more as though she was expressing her thoughts out loud than striking up a conversation. Hmm, really? Coming from you, Aozaki, that's really nice to hear. Sojuro gave her an earnest smile. But then again, he had been beaming ever since he received his pay, so the source of his joy was not so clear. Well, not so fast. You still got some ways to go, Buster. So don't get too carried away. You're only breaking. You're only just breaking even, if that. You're not going to get get on my back about school, are you? That really spoiled my mood. Sojuro hung his head, uh, dejectedly. Even if his job had been doing well, school was still a bust. Exams were one thing, but even classwork was something he had found himself failing, uh, falling behind in. 
Why do you hate people with bad grades, Aozaki? まあ、頭というか、めぐりの悪い人との話は疲れるでしょうね。でも、あなたはそれ以前だし、そもそも私にはこれっぽっちも関係ないし。Well, dealing with lame brains is certainly tiring, but that's besides the point in your case. And don't get this go to your head. And don't let this get to your head. We're not friends, okay? でっかいハンデを何とかするのは先生たちの仕事で、それに答えるのはあなたの役ね。it's the, it's the teacher's job to figure out how to help students overcome handicaps. And it's your job to follow through on that help. Having a job is fine with me. Make sure you study pro uh, properly when you get home. You can count on me. Everyone at school is good people. So, Fine, if you say so. Wait, did you just say everyone is good people? Uncle cocked her head to the to one side, unsure how to how this exchange had resulted in that response. She decided to interpret it as Sojo simply expressing his gratitude in his own peculiar way. Oh, and one more thing. I need to know what other kinds of jobs you're working, you know, in case it comes up. If you're asking where, I work a lot of places in the shopping district, the fish shop, the flower shop, and so on. Oh, but yesterday I went over to the next town. I worked a shift at the amusement park. You know, my man is a renaissance man, dude. Since the only school authorized locations were in Masaki Shopping District, her response was much as she expected. That is, except for the decidedly unexpected last part. When you say amusement park, you don't mean the one in Yashirogi, do you? So, That's the one. I disassembled and moved unused signs and karyos and stuff. It was exhausting. <laughs> That's so? Yeah. I can imagine it took a lot out of you. This left Alko rather impressed. Transporting unused amusement park machinery was not a job that students will uh, students did willingly in their free time. <laughs> I'm a bit jealous. I've never been to Kitsy Land, even though it's so close to here. Alka looked up in the direction of the neighboring town. From here you could see you could just barely make what from here you could just barely make out the Ferris wheel. The round, still framing the wheel, illuminated by the sunset as it was, was reminiscent of an old gravestone. So that's a shame. Is it because you're short on cash? <laughs> Alko had to stifle her laughter. She knew it would be rude to Sojuro to burst out laughing, but the remark tickled her funny bone. <laughs> no, it's not like that. It's simple, really. Even back when it first opened, it was always packed with people, and I never and I just never had the time to go. If it were a problem with that, could be solved with money? What? If it were a problem a problem that could be solved with money, I would go right now. You know, my brain is starting to fucking <laughs> starting to it's starting to what's it called, man? Like, come on, can we end this dude? I didn't think this last volume was gonna be so long. Alko uh, so Shojiro the envelope that contained the pay from the church. There was nothing sinister about her remark and gesture, but the fact that she did not jump at the chance to, that made uh, Sojiro uh, sad. Then why, we, then why don't we go sometime? Thanks, but no can do. 
You probably didn't catch on because of who you are, but the place went out of business. I think it's been about two years since the park closed down. What? It was no wonder there were no customers at all this time. Uh, at the time he was there, exasperated as she was at Sojuro, the student council president seemed to be enjoying herself. At this point, she would be yelling things at Sojuro like, "I can't believe you didn't know that." But this evening. This was the one and only evening. She found it charming. Tog. Dog, can we end this, please? Dude, what the hell? They parted ways, and Sojo returned home to his apartment, immersed himself in his studies, and before he knew it, it was time to go to work. The major cultural difference, though certainly not the only point of difference, between the city and the country was the use of time. It did not matter what part of the city he was in, time flowed far too quickly here. Failing to squeeze even a drop of knowledge from his textbooks, he put them away for the day before heading into town. The night grew deeper as today turned, uh, turned into tomorrow. Sajor reserved a uh, reverse his collar to protect his neck from the bitter cold and began to make his way back home. Not a soul to be seen, no dogs scrounging for food, no late night shoppers. Why would there be? Why would there be? The solitary convenience store in the area closed at 11 o'clock. He mustered what little energy he had to take in an especially deep breath. Man-made landmarks lined the deserted uh, street. Garner's blue fluorescent, fluorescent light, brighter than the stars above, illuminated the darkness. An unconscious sense of anxiety stirred within him. Uh, get yourself together. It's normal for the night to be scary. A chill crept up his spine as he attempted to mask his weakness with words. Stay out of the dark. Stay away from deserted places. Whether it, was for, whether it was for some deeper reason, or perhaps the fact that he looked helpless, everybody that he had met in his life seemed to warn him with those words. Hmm. Did knowing that ever help anyone? What did that even mean, stay out of the dark? Nowhere in the city was without light. Everywhere, from the bustling train station to the remote, to the remote residential areas, was illuminated by artificial light, not least the main roads. Scary was scary, but this kind of fear was so different, was a different sort of what he felt in the mountains. The most likely source of his fear was the fact that this place was governed by starkly different rules. In a way in which the city uh, meted out justice was terribly imbalanced. And to the, uh, the pro province, the provincial uh, Sodro, I'm just gonna say that, his lack of familiarity with the laws of the land terrified him far more than the dark. In the mountains, retribution came swiftly to those who broke the rules. Take a game trial, for example. Those who unwittingly trespass on the, king on the animal kingdom's domain would, as a matter of course, be savaged by the native wildlife. Accordingly, in Sojuro's mind, an offender paid the price for one's mistakes immediately. It was not a matter of who punished whom. It was simply that the one who broke the rules would meet instant, tangible retribution. And that, he felt that in this regard, the laws of the city were far too ambiguous. One can meet their demise without ever knowing whether one was in the right or wrong. Though, I guess it's probably not that different from when it, when it comes down to it. To put it simply, retribution was delayed. To take the analogy a step further, back home in his village, no one, no one individual had been given responsibility of maintaining order. Ugh. In the city, however, someone was put in charge of punishing lawbreakers on behalf of the kind-hearted citizens who lived there. While crime and punishment in the mountains were synonymous, in the city, the two were separated, and an unrelated person's brought judgment after the crime had been committed. Entering places that must not be entered. 
seeing things that must not be seen. Breaking the law had consequences. Someone would have, oh, someone would have come, someone would come to exact justice for the law that was broken. The result of all this was the safest way to, sur to survive the city was not to stick your nose in affairs of others. When the people who cared about Sojiro told him, stay away, they probably meant, if you don't, nobody will be able to help you. Ah, oh, crap. I almost took another shortcut. No matter how much of a nuisance these obstacles were, one could not just climb over a neighbor's fence, even when one's apartment was just the other side. If the person inside happened to be awake and called the police, nobody would lift a hand to help him. With his misguided view of the city, Sojiro once again ended his day in peace. Unable to fall asleep right away, his, he gazed out his window upon the night sky from the floor of his apartment. The cityscape had caused him to tremble in fear when he first moved here. The convenience of solving almost any problem with the flip of a switch. The novelty of living a wall away from a complete stranger. It all disappeared into the night sky when he looked up. Is it really the same sky? Unconsciously, he recalled his own words. What dim stars. What a cramped sky. Here, there were no starry nights. Could he even survive here? The same misgiving since, he, since his first night continued to haunt him. His eyelids fell shut. Although he was fraught with worry, Sergio's body felt the fatigue from his work and studies, and thus, he fell fast asleep. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. There we go. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the town's story. We got that out of the way. That one was a lot longer than I expected. Almost two hours and 30 minutes. A little ridiculous, bro. I, yeah, that's where we're going to end it off, man. Uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy. And if you did, please like comment and subscribe. It is your boy white album. I will be back with some more archive stories on Witch on the holy night. I'll see you guys next time.